So, I've been gaining more subscribers recently. If you're one of them, hi, welcome, I cannot thank you enough. But because we have now hit over 900, I thought this would be a good time to address the terminology I use in my videos. According to YouTube's analytics, most of my audience is from the States. Which makes sense, it is a massive country, and a lot of the world's English speakers live there. Now, if I've understood correctly, the US has a habit of enforcing person-first language. That is to say, instead of saying someone is disabled, you say person with a disability. Or instead of saying someone is autistic, you say person with autism. Which, in my humble opinion, and please excuse my French, is bullshit. I do not have autism, I am autistic. I may have a disability, but it is absolutely fine to just say, I am disabled. Now, obviously, I am not speaking for all autistic or disabled people here. I am one singular person, this is how I feel, I am merely expressing that. But I really do feel like person-first language hurts more than it helps. It makes disabled seem like a dirty word. Like, it's something to be ashamed of and talked around. And when you talk about something in that manner, you reinforce the attitude that it is something to be shamed or pitied. My disabilities are not shameful. <laughs> They're facts of my life that I cannot change, and talking around them doesn't help anyone. In fact, it's how we get euphemisms like differently abled, or handicapable, while the issue of person first or not is more individualized, I have yet to meet a single disabled person who actually likes these euphemistic terms. Differently abled implies we're still able-bodied, which we literally are not. Able-bodied in a different way? What is that? That's nothing. It's complete and utter nonsense. It's meaningless, and in denying our disabilities, it places an enormous importance on being able-bodied, which only furthers stigma against disabled people. Handicapable is thankfully one I haven't seen in a while, but it bears mentioning anyway because it absolutely reeks of toxic positivity. It plays off of the outdated term, handicapped, and really pushes the idea that there's nothing you can't do if you just pick yourself up by your bootstraps. Which, by the way, is an impossible task. I don't understand how that saying is something positive or aspirational. It's literally physically impossible. And again, we come back around to the euphemism erasing our disabilities and furthering stigma against us. It's implying that there's nothing we can't do if we only put our minds to it, which on paper is a lovely concept, but things don't work like that. No amount of gumption and elbow grease is going to change the fact that if I don't lie down at some point during the day, my sleep is going to suffer because my spine will be screaming bloody murder. It doesn't change the fact that if my sleep suffers, I am liable to have an episode of extreme muscle weakness, or a migraine that breaks through my medication. It doesn't change the fact that my body literally doesn't make collagen correctly. These are all just things in my life. They're facts, and I am not helped by people trying to paint over them with pretty words. These euphemisms are simultaneously downplaying our disabilities and infantilizing us. Like, we can't handle frank discussions about the reality of our lives. As if being disabled is so horrible it deserves the Voldemort treatment. But the fact is, as much as able-bodied people like to pretend these euphemisms are for our benefit, they're not. They exist, purely and simply, for their comfort. Able-bodied people have a tendency to become squeamish around disability. 
it's not something the majority of them like to think about for too long. Some disabilities can look off-putting, others have aspects to them that qualify under TMI. No matter what disability we're talking about, there's gonna be some level of medical involvement, and no one really likes the hospital. It's generally not a good place to be. So in creating euphemisms for disability, able-bodied people get to create a veil for themselves. A world in which they don't have to think about us or our existence. These euphemisms actively hurt us, but they're more comfortable for able-bodied people, so there will always be those who do not care. That is why I refuse person-first language. Not just because it's less clunky or quicker, but because I am disabled. I am a person, I have a disability, I am not a person with a disability. I am just disabled. That's it. If you can't handle that, I ask you to take a step back and ask yourself, why? Disabled is not a bad word. It's not a slur. Trust me, there are plenty of slurs against disabled people. The most basic descriptive word for us is not one of them. It's just an adjective. It has just as much of an impact on my life as the fact that I am Finnish. Which is to say, it shapes my life in a massive way, which is impossible to ignore, but it is, at the end of the day, just another word among many which describes who I am. There are those who argue for person-first language on the basis that it serves to remind people of our personhood. You know, put the person first, and all that. It's a nice enough sentiment, but, well, if you have to use person-first language to remind yourself that I am a human being, worthy of respect, despite the fact that I am disabled, well, that says a hell of a lot more about you than it does about me, doesn't it? I know this one was a little bit shorter, but I just wanted to check in and do a bit of an update and thank everyone who's new to the channel because, oh my god. <laughs> Welcome, hi, hello, I hope you enjoy your stay, and thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, consider liking it and maybe subscribing. I will be back here Thursday after next. Bye!